Welcome back guys, in this video we're going to talk about the Revit site plan. So let's start a new project, no template and metric. So the first thing we're going to do is draw some site boundaries. Let's go into the annotate tab and select detail lines. I'm just going to draw a rectangular shape and let's make that 50 meters by 50 meters. This is going to form our topography. The next thing we're going to do is draw some contour lines using the detail lines again, and it can use the spleen tool. The next thing I'm going to do is add a topple surface into the site plan and use the lines that I redrew earlier as a reference. Before that, I'm going to go to my view range under the properties panel, click on edit. Then I'm going to change all of these to unlimited. That would enable me to see everything within the view. Then I'm also going to change the cut plane to be 25 meters and hit OK. So let's draw in our topple surface select topple surface and then I'm going to draw this by placing points so we can start with the outer edge and place a point at each corner and then we can roughly infill with points along where these contour lines are it doesn't have to be accurate for the purpose of this tutorial Once the points are drawn in, we can set the datums for these points. So let's make these at two meter intervals and let's set our datum zero level to the middle of the site. That would mean all points below go negative and all points above go positive. So let's make this one minus one meter, minus one M enter let's make these ones plus one meter so one meter enter and then go on from there so we have three meters and we have five meters and let's make the outer edge seven meters and then we do the same for going downhill so these ones will be minus three meters and these ones will be minus five meters. And then again, let's make the edge minus seven meters. So let's finish the edit on the topography. And now that we're done with the line work, we can delete those lines. One more thing we can do is change the intervals of the contour lines. So under the site tab, the model site panel, you can press this little site settings button in the corner and we can adjust the intervals. Let's adjust that to two meters and hit apply. That looks a bit more reasonable now. So let's select okay. And that's our topography drawn in place. Let's change the detail level to fine and let's change the visual style to consistent colors. So now we have consistent colors as the visual style. We can see that the material isn't entered for this topography. So let's select our topography. We can go to our materials and we can create a new material. Right click and rename. And let's call this one grass. Let's go to the asset browser and type in grass. And let's choose grass raw field. We can double click it and that brings the properties in. And then go to graphics and change it to use render appearance and hit OK. So now we have a grass material in place. One thing to check is how it looks in the poche. So how it looks when it's cut in 3D view. So let's go to our default 3D view. Let's also change the visual style on this to consistent colors. And let's change the detail level to fine. We can turn on our section box and we can crop that in place just inside the edge of the topography. Now when we rotate round, we can see that it's a default gray fill. 
to the side. So let's change the Poche material to Earth. So again, we go into the Site tab, the Model Site panel, and we go into the Site Settings. For the Section Cut material, we can change it using this button here. We can create a new material, right click, rename, and let's call that Soil. We go into the Appearance tab, Asset Browser, let's type in Soil. And let's use Mulch Brown Mix, double click on that, close out, we have that loaded in, and then we go to Graphics, and select Use Render Appearance, and hit OK. And then now that material has changed to use the Earth material. So the next thing we're going to do is draw in our road. So let's go back to annotate, use detail lines. And then I'm just going to draw in a road on the right hand side. And then that road can curve off a little bit. Let's offset this by five meters. And then again for our sidewalk, let's do another offset of 1.5 meters on both sides. So that'll be the road that we're going to trace. Let's go back into the site panel and let's use the split surface tool and select our topography. Now with the split surface, you can only split it into two parts. So we have to do each line for this road one by one. Let's use the pick lines tool and let's start with the first line. I'm going to select all three lines and then hit finish edit. One thing to note is that the lines need to go beyond the outer edge of the topography for this to work. So let's finish the edit and then let's split surface again until we get all four surfaces done. So once that's done, we'll have five different sets of topography. So one, two, three, four and five. So let's change some of the materials. Let's go with the road surface itself, edit the material, create new material, right click, rename and let's call this asphalt and then in the asset browser we type in asphalt and let's use the dark gray asphalt for this one double click it and then close out change the graphics to use render appearance and hit ok so let's change the sidewalks or pavements so now we have our pavements in place and our road surface in place we no longer need these detail lines so we can get rid of those ones okay so our top hole surface is coming along nicely Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the property lines. So under the site tab, we can go to property lines and then we're going to select create by sketching. So we're going to split our plots into 10 meters by 25 meters. So let's start at the top. Let's go down 10 meters. And then along here, we're going to go 25 meters. And then we can finish the edit on that one. We can draw another property line, create by sketching. Then we can do the same thing again. So now we have three property lines in place. Let's graphically change what these property lines look like. So we go into our visibility graphics overrides. We scroll down to site. We open that node up. And then under the property lines, we can override the line type. So let's click on the override button. Let's change the color to red. Okay. And let's change the pattern to dash dot dot and hit OK. The next thing we're going to do is a water feature on the site. So let's go to split surface again. We can select the topography and then I'm going to draw in a curve into this corner. So let's go out here and then out there. Remembering to extend these lines beyond the edge of the topography. So we can do that side and also this side. And then we can finish the edit. Select the topography and then we can change this to water. So now the water's in place, let's go to our 3D view and see how we look. So 3D. And that looks quite nice. Let's add some context into our site. Back to level one. Then click on site component. So this is a blank template, so let's load in some trees. So click on yes. And in your library, you can scroll down to planting and then you can select one of the trees. So let's go with deciduous and then hit OK. We could then place some trees around our site. 
one thing to note is the trees don't look that good as standard so let's modify that slightly so i select a tree i'm going to go to edit family i'm going to go to the floor plan and then i'm going to edit what the tree looks like in plan so let's select the base and you can note here that this is a nested family it is a family inside the family so we need to go in to edit that one so we go to edit family and then i'm going to just add using annotate a masking region so again we're going to use the circle and then we're going to copy the same boundary as the tree itself and then i'm going to load that into the tree planting deciduous then i'm going to load that back into the project and then override it so now the trees are in place and they are white in color because i've added the masking region for this view i'm going to go to the visibility graphics override scroll down to planting and then i'm going to change the transparency to 80 percent and hit ok and then ok again so that gives us a nicer color palette and we can adjust some trees if they are overlapping a little bit let's now add some street furniture so again we go to the site tab we can go to the site component and we can click on load family this time we can come out of the planting folder and we can scroll down to the site folder then we can use any of the default families that revit comes with so if you click on accessories we have bike racks and bike stands we have bollards we have flagpoles and benches and so on so let's go with a park bench and select open so then we can add the park bench in the appropriate location so let's add one there and let's add one here so the benches are in place let's place some bollards as well so we go back to site component we load family and then we can select one of the bollards let's go with the site bollard steel and open that up and then we can place that in place now that we have bollards in place let's go with some building pads to finish up our site plan now building pads work specifically with the topography to cut it down to a certain graded level so if you select a normal floor it will not cut the topography but a building pad that will cut the topography so let's draw one in place so we under the site tab we can select building pad and then we can select a simple rectangle and we can draw that in place in our site let's make this 15 meters long by 8 meters wide so if we go to 3d we'll be able to see that the building pad has cut the topography I'm just going to hide this section box here by right clicking hiding view and elements so that is cutting the topography so we just need to lower it down so it makes more sense on the site so we can go to a front view and we can use the arrow keys just to lower that down and there we have the level of our building pad now in reality we would need to construct some retaining walls for some of this topography but for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to leave our building pads as blank pads so let's go back to the level and what we can do is copy this building pad from plot to plot select the multiple tool and then we can go from that corner to that corner and then to the next corner so we have three building pads in place let's modify the second two so that they're also leveled and that seems to work okay yeah we can leave it like that so back to our plan and we're going to add one final thing in this tutorial let's go to label contours so once we select the contour labels we can draw a line which cuts through all of the contours and that would automatically label them one thing to note is this is in the default project unit so if you want to change it you have to select it then you go to edit type and then under the units format you can change the settings there so untick the use project settings and let's change this to meters and hit ok one final thing we're going to do is change our graphic style for this drawing so let's go to the graphics display options 
let's go to sketchy lines enable the sketchy lines and let's turn the jitter to 5 and the extensions to 5 and hit OK I'm going to do one more adjustment to this property line so it stands out a bit more so let's go to the visibility graphics override we scroll down to site we open that up and then under the property line let's modify that and change the weight to 8 and hit OK and let's hit apply to see what that change does and that seems okay okay excellent so now we have the property line we have the building pads we have the trees we have the site topography done we have the road and the pavement done and that concludes our tutorial for today don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one